In this video, I'm going to go over some basic statistics formulas that you need to know for those of you who might be taking this course soon. So let's go over the basics. Let's say we have the numbers 2, 3, 5, 5, and then 7, 8, 9, 10, and 12. If we want to determine the median of this data set, the median is simply the middle number. So the middle number is 7, that's going to be the median. The mode is the number that occurs most frequently. So the mode is 5. The number 5 has a frequency of 2 in this data set. Now, if you want to calculate the range, the range is the difference between the highest number or the maximum and the lowest number, which is the minimum. So 2 has the lowest value, that's the minimum. 12 is the maximum. So the range is going to be 12 minus 2, which is 10. The number 5 is the first quartile. The median is the second quartile. And 9 is the third quartile. The first quartile is the 25th percentile. The third quartile is the 75th percentile. And the second quartile is the 50th percentile. Now there's something called the IQR interquartile range. And this is the difference between the third quartile and the first quartile. So that's another formula that you want to add to the list. Now the next equation you need to be familiar with is the average, also known as the arithmetic mean, or in this case, the sample mean. The sample mean is the sum of all the data points divided by n. So if we were to add up the numbers 2 plus 3 plus 5 and so forth, and we have a total of nine numbers in this data set, if we plug this in, this will give us the average. So the sum of those nine numbers is 61. And if we divide it by nine, we'll get 6.7 repeating. So this is the average or the arithmetic mean of the data set. Now, if you want to find the arithmetic mean of two numbers, it's simply the sum of those two numbers divided by two. If you want to calculate the geometric mean of two numbers, it's the square root of the product of those two numbers. So it's the square root of a times b. Now, if you want to calculate the harmonic mean, it's 2 divided by the reciprocal of a and b. It's 2 divided by the sum of the reciprocal of a and b. So it looks like the reciprocal of the arithmetic mean formula, but instead of a and b, you have the reciprocal of those data points. Now, if you rearrange this equation by multiplying the top and bottom by a, b, this equation becomes 2 times a, b divided by a plus b. So it's twice the product of a and b divided by the sum of a and b. So that's how you can find the harmonic mean of two numbers. Now, if you want to find the root mean square of two numbers, it's going to be the sum of the squares of those numbers divided by 2. Very similar to this equation, but you're squaring a and b. Now, if you were to pick any two numbers, and if you were to calculate these four values, you'll find that the harmonic mean is less than the geometric mean, which is less than the arithmetic mean. 
and that's less than the root mean square. The root mean square is the highest of these four. It turns out that the geometric mean is equal to the square root of the product of the arithmetic mean and the harmonic mean. Now let's go back to the arithmetic mean. So we said that the arithmetic mean is the sum of all the data points divided by n. So what that means is you take each data point, x1 plus x2 plus x3, you add up all of them, and this can go all the way to x to the n, and then you divide it by the number of data points or the size of the sample that you have, and that will help you to calculate the arithmetic mean. So that's the expanded formula of the arithmetic mean. If you want to calculate the geometric mean, you could use this formula. It's the product of all of the data points all the way to x to the n, and then it's raised to the 1 over n. So let's say if we have two data points, x1 and x2. In this case, n is 2. So if we replace x1 with a and x2 with b, we get that the geometric mean of two numbers is the square root of a and b, where this has an index number of 2. But if you have more than two numbers, then you want to use this formula to calculate the geometric mean of multiple numbers. Next is something called the weighted mean. To calculate the weighted mean, you need to take the sum of the products of Wx divided by the sum of the weights, or the sum of W. So it's going to be W1x1 plus W2x2 plus W3x3. And this is going to continue to WnxN. And all of this is divided by W1 plus W2 plus W3 all the way to Wn. Now, for those of you who want to see some example problems on how to use these formulas, feel free to check out the links in the description section below. I'm going to be posting more content where you can find uh, examples on how you can employ these formulas. The next formula is the harmonic mean. So it's n over the sum of the reciprocal of the data points. So 1 over x. In its expanded form, it looks like this. It's n over 1 over x1 plus 1 over x2 plus 1 over x3 and so forth. So that's how you can calculate the harmonic mean if you have multiple numbers. Now, to calculate the root mean square, it's going to be the sum of the squares of the data points divided by n, but all within a square root. So you need to square each data point and add them up. and then divide it by the size of the sample, and then take the square root of that entire result. So that's how you can calculate the root mean square of a data set. Now, you need to be able to make a distinction between the sample and the population. What you need to understand is that the sample is a subset of the population. It's just a small part of it. So whenever you see x bar, this represents the sample mean. 
if you see lowercase n, this is the sample size. Now, whenever you see the Greek letter mu, this has to do with the population mean. So notice the difference between the two. That's the sample mean. This is the population mean. If you see capital N, that is the size of the population, not the sample size, which is different from the population size. For instance, you may have 10,000 residents in a city, but your tests might be on 300 out of that population of 10,000. So your sample might be 300, but the population capital N could be a lot bigger. So just know that lowercase n and capital N, they're not the same, they're different. Now, S represents the standard deviation of the sample. So here's how you calculate the sample standard deviation. It's the difference between the data point and the sample mean. You need to square that difference and take the sum of all of those square differences and then you need to divide it by n minus 1 and then take the square root of that result. So that's the formula you need to calculate the standard deviation of the sample. Now to calculate the standard deviation of the population instead of using s it's going, we're going to use theta. So the formula is very similar. It's going to be the square root of the sum of the square differences between each data point. But instead of the sample mean, we are going to use the population mean. And instead of the sample size, we're going to use the population size. And it's going to be capital N and not N minus 1. So that's the difference between the sample standard deviation and the population standard deviation. Now the next formula you want to be familiar with is variance. To calculate the variance of the sample is simply the square of this equation. So it's everything that you see there, but without the square root. So that's how you can calculate the variance of the sample. To calculate the variance of the population, it's the square of the population standard deviation. So everything that you see above, but without the square root symbol. So that will help you to calculate the population variance. And this is how you spell it, V-A-R-I-A-N-C-A. -A. Now the next equation we're going to talk about is the coefficient of variation. To calculate the coefficient of variation for the sample, it's simply the sample standard deviation divided by the sample mean times 100%. Now to calculate the coefficient of variation for the population, it's going to be the population mean divided by, actually I take that back, it's the population standard deviation divided by the population mean times 100%. So in both cases, the coefficient of variation is the standard deviation divided by the mean times 100%. So it's the ratio between the standard deviation and the mean. And it's typically reported at a, as a percentage. So if you have a coefficient of variation of 0.25, what this means is that the standard deviation is 25% the value of the mean. Now the last formula that I'm going to go over in this video is something called the mean absolute deviation. The mean absolute deviation, it's going to be the sum of the absolute differences between each data point and the sample mean. And all of this is divided by n.
So it's kind of similar to how you would calculate the standard deviation. The only difference is you're not taking the square of these differences and you're not taking the square root of the entire result. Other than that, the process is somewhat similar. Now, there's many other formulas in statistics that you're going to learn as you go through the course, but I just want to give you some basic formulas that you may encounter in the beginning of statistics. So that's it for this video. And for those of you who want to see how to put this in action, feel free to check out the links in the description section below. I'm going to be posting more content there that you can take a look at. So feel free to check that out when you get a chance.